Now, I will say this. As a teacher, I don't force my students to, to, to respond. I tell them, guys, I don't call you. When I ask a question, I need some responses. I'm not going to force you to speak unless I have to. Because there's times, right, where we just need an answer. That's not wrong. I'll tell my students, guys, I know no one's, no one's responding, but I, please, I need a response here. Why do you think Aspen was doing that? What was the big influence? Please, someone. I have to call on you if I don't get a response. Joey, do me a favor. What, why do you think? And then I get a response. So sometimes we do call on students. But if it's the norm where you're like, all right, we want to kick on right now. That's not good. That's not supported by neuroscience or behavioral psychology. So let, let me tell you my background with behavioral psychology and neuroscience. I think it's important for you to know because I'm a teacher, just like you guys, I'm a teacher. So before I became a high school teacher, I was a business owner. I was a kickboxer. I was a very young kickboxer. And I went to kickboxing school for 10 years before I became a high school uh, teacher. And just like all small business owners, I read a lot of business books. And business books are all about behavioral psychology. How do you get your clients to feel valued? How do you get them to appreciate what you do? How do you get them to feel wanted? How do you get them to look forward to coming to you? How do you get them to find value in what you're doing while they're with you and want to come back to you? That's what, that's what business is all about, behavioral psychology. If you don't treat your clients a certain way, they're going to go somewhere else or not you know, go at all, right? Not take advantage of that. And so I think that teachers make really good business owners because we understand that. And I think being a high school teacher or classroom teacher is the closest thing to owning a small business. 